Brought to you by Copal, the world's biggest delivery linked art fund. A Bloomberg UTV Pulse initiative. The journey through the art world continues. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Artwise. Today the focus is going to be on buyers, the issue of liquidity and what kind of concerns you can face while investing in the art market. Pertinent issues if you're looking at this as an investment destination and we'll try and get you some answers over the next uh, 30 odd minutes. Sahar as always is with me. Uh, good to see you again. Good to be here as always <laughs> Rahul. As uh, Rahul mentioned, the larger concerns that an art buyer does deal with is liquidity. But apart from that, there are also issues of restoration, paperwork, authentication certificates. We're going to be discussing all of that in this episode. Before we go ahead, let me introduce you to our set of panelists for this episode. We have with us Mr. Ajay Seth, who is the chief mentor for Copal Art. And there's also Mr. Ambrish Baliga with us, who is the vice president of Carvi Stockbroking Limited. And we also have uh, Ms. Kalpana Shah with us, who's the owner of Tao Art Gallery. But before we go ahead in the discussion, let's take you through a report which does touch upon these issues that the buyer faces. Indian art has made remarkable breakthroughs in the last few years. With both modern and contemporary artists commanding phenomenal valuations at domestic and international auctions. For investors looking to diversify their investment portfolio, art certainly promises to be a lucrative asset. But unlike the structured financial market, the Indian art market is at a very nascent stage and there are several issues that need to be addressed when it comes to upholding the interests of both investors and collectors. I think there are a lot of issues you know, in terms of uh, the regulation that applies to the investment in art. There are issues of liquidity, there are issues of you know, um, uh, who buys, at what time do they buy, at what price they buy. You know, these are very fundamental questions in an investment and uh, right now I don't think we have anything on that front at all. Liquidity is a prime concern for those looking to invest in art. In addition, issues such as transparency and authentication in the art market are proving to be major challenges in expanding the base of collectors and investors. Today the fake market is something that all of us are coming up against every day. You know, you hear of fakes uh, being created and, and uh, sold to, uh, to, to innocent new buyers all the time. They have no way of knowing which is a real work and which is a fake. The only way people can uh, recognize original works, I think, is if they look at artworks more. And another thing is to f there should be organizations where expert advice is available. Experts advise due diligence on part of the buyer. Always buy your works from well-established art institutions. Most of these have a system of documentation and authentication in place to ensure that the artwork is original. Also avoid getting into shady deals which offer a bargain price for a known artist. Remember, an original work of art is never put on discounted sale. With the Indian art story set to turn into a bestseller over the next few years, there is an urgent need to have a regulatory body in place to monitor this fast-paced growth. Well, so what are the issues that face uh, you, the buyer, uh, that is looking to invest in art uh, as an asset class? Uh, Amrish, let's start off with you first, uh, this issue of liquidity. Yeah. You're a stock market person. Uh, this is not a very liquid 
asset class to be having. But uh, is it nonetheless a lucrative alternative to equities if uh, that is not looking like your primary asset class, say stock markets? You look at art as an investment option? Yeah, surely I think one should look at art as an investment option because end of the day you need to diversify. You can't be putting all your uh, money in the same basket. You can't put all your eggs in the same basket. So uh, this is surely a good way to uh, diversify and we have been recommending people to invest in art. But again, one needs to keep in mind that liquidity is not too good. I mean, if, you're, if you assume that you'll have the same sort of liquidity as to what you have in the market, then you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because you need to uh, at least uh, keep in mind that you should be investing at least for two to three years. Right. Um, Ajay, you come across um, investors, fresh investors, talking about the subject. How do you deal with them? We, we get this query, you know, as and when a new investor comes in. Right. So the first is we straight away, you know, form on them that you have to, if you're purely, you're investing purely as an investment, so you better stay out, right? You, you have to actually become a collector and you will really see a good gain on that. I would say that 50% of our investors who came in as investors with Copal, they are not wanting to sell paintings today even if we are going back to them or they're getting offers from the market that you get three times or four times the value because now they virtually become collectors. Right. So looking at the liquidity, I would say as to what artist you are buying, what paintings are you buying. My, my suggestion to everybody is wait for the price if you are coming as an investor, wait for the price to come. Right. You know, don't set a bargain of two years or three years. You buy and you fix a price that I'll get out at this price. Unless mm -hmm. until you get it, stay back. So come as a passionate collector. Then you see the value, there's definitely wealth into it. Right, mm. but why do you think this is happening when you say that when investors come into you as, as first timers, they really, their only concern is liquidity, but they gradually learn really how to deal see, uh, with art as an investor. We would, we would have to go back, see, in, you know, unfortunately India does not have a history of, you know, huge number of art collectors. You know, I keep on stating this. They look into the global arena, even into in, look into the case of China or Hong Kong, you know, the number of collectors are huge. Mm -hmm. You know, Indian market is not matured because we have never valued our art. So today, if we are to looking at the valuation, it's 99% people are looking at it as an investment. But it's a good beginning. You know, you, even if you take it as an asset class, then you're saying that you are investing it, but you have to have a time horizon for every asset class, even for a company in the stock market. The investment banker or the wealth manager always gives a call that in this stock you have to wait for five years. So I would say standardize that in case of art, one, go for a good work mm -hmm. and do your diligence and go for the matured artist. Let's say, go for a Hussain, go for a Raza, go for Tayyab Mehta. So for a good artist, liquidity is always there. You can, Tayyab if you want to liquefy, you can liquefy mid midnight. Hmm. Kapna, what's your own sense? Uh, when you look at this issue of liquidity in the art market, uh, do you think that uh, this asset class provides you with enough exit opportunities uh, and that perhaps is something that investors or collectors can look forward to because it's a bit of a dichotomy uh, when you look at investors and collectors. The numbers differ, but as uh, Ajay was pointing out, it's still a very nascent sort of an industry in India. Liquidity is, you know, depending a lot on demand and supply in all markets. Here, immediately you can't get your uh, money back, but you have to wait and as... Uh, Everyone says the right art is so important and for that art awareness is so important. You're visiting more galleries and art shows and looking at, looking at art is seriously is very important. And if you buy right art, you always have the way out. There is no, no problem. All right, we've started on the note of liquidity, but we're also going to be discussing uh, restoration and authentication still ahead on this show. So do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still with this special telecast on Artwise where we're discussing issues that face the buyer from liquidity to other aspects uh, that could perhaps be entry barriers uh, in the world of art. Amrish, uh, this issue of um, research that right. uh, we were talking about just a while back in the break as well, how important is that from an investor's perspective? Because one of the things that uh, a lot of people are scared about when they enter the art market is duplication or fakes as well. So right. how authentic is the research out there and how deep does it have to be before you take your first step into it? See, research is important, whether it's art or equity, it is important. 
And um, I mean, what I've seen from Copil, uh, the amount of research which they do, the amount of information which they actually provide uh, to an investor or an art collector is tremendous. And uh, I mean, I see a lot of uh, similarity between the way we do research for equity and the way, I mean, they do research, uh, I'm mean, about an artist. End of the day, when you're doing a equity research, you look at the sector, you look at the management. Mm -hmm. Here, you track the artist, what sort of uh, work he has done in the past, what is the future for uh, his sort of art? Uh, I mean, how has the trend moved and the pricing? And the way they have actually put that down and they keep informing the investors, I think that is very important. Right. Uh, Ajay, talking about the research that Kopal does that Ambrish was just mentioning, you have a research team in place which takes out reports of an average of one in a week or something? No, it's just on a quite, uh, you know, regular basis. Uh, one is that we have set up, uh, you know, 18 months back a full-fledged research wing. You know, I was always very, very passionate as to, you know, the things, you know, if you have to structure the whole this thing. So the question as Amrish had put in is that if you have a proper research in place, the chances of Copal or an investor going wrong is, is very rare. Now, like in equity, you know, they, they monitor a couple of issues, you know, the price earning ratios, the future calls and all. So that's why we have set up our, our norms, which we share with the collectors. And I'm happy to inform you that none of our recommendations have ever gone wrong. Mm -hmm. When the markets were haywire, right. like Amrish knows, all artists which Copal recommended, because we had discounted everything, you know, that if things go bad, mm -hmm. what would be there? And I always do advise that a good artist and good work. And for a beginner, the, the research is available from Copal, but the outside diligence should also be done, which Copal provides. And this research info is shared on a very, very regular basis okay. with all the clients. It is sent to them on mail. It is sent as a research report. We've done three major reports on National Heritage, Jogen Chaudhary, S.H. Raza. Now we're doing it on Bharti Kher. These are worth reading reports. Right, and it's also very important for a buyer, apart from having their homework in place, apart from reading up this research, it's also important for a buyer to know how to maintain their artwork and also the possible requirements of restoration. One of India's topmost restorers, Priya Khanna, speaks to that on that subject. The value of art is not merely a measure of how much it was acquired for, but also how well it has been maintained and preserved. Right from the time it was bought through the time it adorns the walls of your home. It's as much a service to art as to your investments to ensure that the artwork is properly looked after. Now suddenly with the Indian art uh, making such a wave in the uh, international art circles and the auctions, uh, a lot more people have got aware of the value of what they possess monetarily. So once they are aware that they could have something of value, then they uh, don't mind looking after it, maintaining it, restoring it because it is preserving the value or in some cases, I would say in most of the cases, even enhancing the value and giving it a life, a healthy life for the next so many years. Art restoration is an integral part of the art ecosystem. Paintings can get damaged due to several factors such as age, environmental conditions, human negligence, accidents, fires and fungal attacks. Restoring art is a very elaborate, lengthy and an extremely meticulous process. We are actually trying to make a lot of collectors uh, who come to us with works for restoration. We do try and advise them on how to look after their paintings once we have completed the restoration process. We do advise them of the do's and the don'ts. And uh, we, I, I do go for, uh, you know, talks in uh, various galleries where they do have, uh, you know, collectors coming in to hear at least the basic requirements uh, that uh, they need to look into for the maintenance of artworks. So, if you are a collector, here are some basic tips on maintaining your artworks. It is advisable never to light the painting directly. Indirect lighting is recommended. Avoid exposing artworks to direct sunlight. Dust the painting regularly, but at the same time ensure that the paint doesn't flake off. During the monsoons, use a dehumidifier to prevent the growth of fungus. Occasionally, remove the painting to check the reverse for dampness. Katna, what's your own take on uh, restoration, uh, especially in the light of what happened uh, a couple of years back uh, in Mumbai at certain heritage places? 
Does this increase the significance and importance of restoration? What's your own take on it? No, of course, it's uh, the most important thing. Now people have started valuing it. Otherwise, uh, people never knew the what kind of art they were possessing or what they are supposed to do after buying an expensive piece of art. But now, because of all the awareness, people are very conscious.